Democrats now demand that the Trump trial be televised so that all of us can see it because they want to rub Trump's nose in this case in their most favored jurisdiction, of course, the D.C. courts. They've set up a little Coliseum type of Roman gladiator battle situation where they can just throw the J6ers to the lions and Trump will be a part of this onslaught from the Democrats. And we know that in federal trials, we don't get to see what's happening inside. No audio visual broadcasting, no live streaming is allowed. But Democrats are now saying, you know, we haven't had enough trials that we've lost against Trump. We tried impeachment one, didn't work. We got egg on our faces there. We tried impeachment two, that didn't work. We tried to crush Trump with seven or eight different January 6th so-called hearings to try to dissuade him from running and try to shatter the brand. None of that has happened. They had new indictment one new indictment two, new indictment three, and we're going to have an indictment four out of Georgia. And they just want to see it. They want us to see it all because they don't have a campaign. They don't have any vision. They don't have any future plan for America or at least with Joe Biden. And they have to take out their political opponents instead in order to win. So now this is Representative Adam Schiff. He's calling on the judicial conference to allow the broadcasting of the court proceedings. And look who signed off on this thing. Adam Schiff, Fishing Benny Thompson, and others. They called on the judicial conference to authorize the live broadcasting of court proceedings in the case of USA versus Trump. They say the current policy of the judicial conference permits judges to authorize broadcasting, televising, recording, or photographing certain criminal proceedings. The letter was signed by a bunch of people, and it's not a long one. Let's take a look at it here. This letter sent August 3rd, Congress of the United States of America, going to the Honorable Roslyn Mousekop over at the Judicial Conference at the United States Courts Administrative Office. Little Adam Schiff, who has been censured, by the way, we should put an asterisk next to his name because he's been censured. So we'll just make that here. We'll just call us censured because he forgets to mark that down from time to time. And it's just important that we recognize that uh, for all to see. So just make sure that's very clear that Adam Schiff has been censured by Congress, a validly elected legitimate Congress censured Adam Schiff. So he signed it. Oh, look who else signed it. Hank Johnson, Guam is going to capsize that guy. We've also got Benny Thompson, who was on the January 6th illegally constituted select committee. And we have Gerald Connolly, Jasmine Crockett, Eleanor Holmes, Stephen Cohen, Lloyd Doggett, Glenn Ivey, Dan Goldman, oh, that guy who lied to us about Devin Archer, and all of these other people who you've never even heard of. Don't even know. Who. Oh, Jamie Raskin. Yeah, we know Jamie Raskin too. Prison Mike. We got Mike Quigley. We've got Pramala Jayapal. Look at all these Democrats. Zoe Lofgren, Mary Gay's on here. We got Greg Stanton, Sheila Jackson Lee. They all want to see it, man. For them, this is like, you know, like a UFC fight or something. They're like, we have to see this. Please publicize it. Uh, we're going to have pay-per-view over at our house where, you know, weird things are going to happen after the show. So this is the letter. It says, Dear Judge Mouskopf, we, censured Adam Schiff and my fellow Democrats, are writing to request the Judicial Conference explicitly authorize the broadcasting of court proceedings in the case of United States of America versus Trump. It is imperative that the conference ensures timely access to accurate and reliable information surrounding these cases and all of their proceedings, giving the extraordinary national importance to our democratic institutions and the need for transparency. Now, I've got a lot of questions about this. Since we're talking about January 6th, since we're talking about insurrection and all of those things, how much transparency do you think they'll afford to us? Can we see all of the J6 footage, for example? Can we see all of the analysis, all of the emails, all of the conversations, notes, recorded documents about the 2020 election and all of those investigations that took place? I'm very doubtful about that. Now, he says, as the policymaking body for the federal courts, the Judicial Conference has historically supported increased transparency and public access to the court's activities. Given the historic nature of the charges brought forth in these cases, it's hard to imagine a more powerful circumstance for televised proceedings. If the public is to fully accept the outcome, it, which we won't anyways, I mean, you can broadcast it, we don't, you know, it's a DC court. We've already seen what they've done to all of the other J6ers. Broadcasting it is not going to make us say, well, that's great. I guess yeah, that's a just outcome. The whole thing's corrupt from the very beginning. But he wants us to be able to, them to be able to sell it. He knows if this is broadcast and the media will really do the rest of the dirty work for him. It will be vitally important for it to witness. 
as directly as possible how the trials are conducted, the strength of the evidence adduced, and the credibility of the witnesses. He says, we urge the conference to take additional steps, including live broadcasting, to ensure the facts of this case are brought forward unfiltered to the public. Sincerely, censured Adam Schiff, who, let's not forget, has been censured. Like one of three people, embarrassing. So this would be curious. You know, I would like to see it publicized. I think that we would see the bias on display when we looked at some of these other trials and we could watch the object. Remember, we get to see things that the jurors don't get to see. And the judges kept out gobs of evidence. And we would have a free for all here. I have to build a team out, man, to clip out all of the stuff and just go hog wild on exposing what is happening. And I think if people could see what's happening in the DC courts, there would be a lot more outrage about it, which is probably why they're not gonna publicize it because if they publicize this one, we're gonna start asking that they publicize the others and then we'll get to see what's really going on in these federal courts. And they don't want us to see that. Why didn't they ask for publicized proceedings for like, let's say, Galen Maxwell? Huh, curious. Donald Trump though, they're up open on that one. This is the Eric Swalwell, that guy who made Bang Bang with Fang Fang, a Chinese spy. He is saying that if Trump is reelected, if he is not convicted, then we are gonna lose America as we know it. Do you find anything reading this indictment that you wish you had access to when you made the case to impeach Donald Trump? We, we had a couple of weeks to put that case together and we had a pretty compelling case because Donald Trump in plain sight, uh, you know, said this was going to be a wild day and fired up that mob. Is that a criminal? But <laughs> the number of people that told the special counsel that Donald Trump and the people around him knew that what they were saying was false, it just, that fires me up more than anything is that this also feels a bit like a grift. Uh, it was, it's not about anyone but Donald Trump and the tweet today that, you know, he's getting arrested so others don't have to get arrested. This is entirely about Donald Trump wanting to hold on to power in an election that he got smoked in and then wanting to use his campaign to raise money for his legal fees. This is entirely about Donald Trump and nobody else. So they're just dogpiling right now. They're very excited about it. They know, you know, a, a lot of their strategies have some oomph to them. They are filing tons of lawsuits civilly. He's got what's gonna amount to four prosecutions all over the place and it costs money, it costs time. But I don't think they have a lot of connection to the law. I mean, he says that other people told Trump something and therefore that makes Trump a criminal? What? Because other people on the other side of that equation were telling Trump the opposite and they were also licensed attorneys. But the DOJ made decisions on their own and just declared that one side was right, the other side was criminal. And now Eric Swalwell is shedding tears for democracy. We also have Benny Thompson. We remember him. He, you know, we don't know much about Benny Thompson. He had one appearance in front of America reading scripts from a teleprompter during the January 6th Select Committee hearings. That's about the extent of what we've heard from him. Let's see how he does here. This might be impromptu speaking. Let's see. Mr. Chairman, I want to ask you too about the thought that there could be a trial of the former commander in chief, not far from where you work every day in the US Capitol at that courthouse, which is the intersection of Pennsylvania Avenue and Constitution Avenue. What will that be like? What will that mean for our country? Well, I think it's part of the, how we test our system of democracy. No one is above the law, not even the president of the United States. Uh, which is just not true, as we've talked about here. The president has the pardon power, so he could just literally pardon himself and other people, which kind of makes him above the law. The chief executive of the entire country, he has the opinion power, which is tucked in between the pardon power and the commander in chief power, which puts his power literally over Congress and their statutes. So he's literally above the congressional law. I mean, what law are these people talking about? Congress? Because they passed U.S. code, which made certain things criminal. If those things are criminal and those criminal statutes conflict with the Constitution, he is literally above the law. It is the dumbest talking point that you'll hear. It has nothing to do with the timing of the election. I believe that no, the all Department four of, them of Justice dropped, looked dropped at right now. a lot of our work and added it to their body of work and determined that something uh, had gone amiss in presenting the evidence to a grand jury. Obviously that grand jury agreed. I don't feel good about the fact that a former president of the United States is going on trial, mm -hmm. I'm sure. but I do feel good I'm that sure. our system of democracy works. 
in that uh, if you are found guilty of any charge uh, or if you are accused of it, uh, you have your day in court. Donald Trump is no different. I'm convinced based on our review of the facts that, as you know, we made some recommendations that we think he did do some things wrong. Uh, but we were not a prosecutorial body. Uh, and that's why what you see with the special counsel is the logical step uh, to determine ultimately uh, whether or not uh, Donald Trump is guilty. Yeah, they were not a prosecutorial body. They just created the January 6th Select Committee, which was illegally constituted, didn't have the exact ratio of members that it was supposed to have, according to House rules. And they had no adversarial proceedings. It was just a bunch of book reports from Liz Cheney, Raskin, and Kinzinger reading from teleprompters with Liz Cheney. It was an embarrassing facade, but it's just talking points. I mean, I really don't even think that they understand the mechanics of what's happening here. But on MSNBC, I think they do. They know that this is the strategy. And this is some commentator over there saying, you know, if Trump is not convicted, if he's not arrested, if he is not legally removed from the field, we might have to organize. We might have to campaign. We might actually have to run like an election, which they don't want to do because they've got Joe Biden at the top of the ticket. It's the grace of the individual uh, to take, uh, accept that defeat to put the country first, but also they have the, their parties with them. Other leaders, whether it's Democrat or Republican alike, saying, look, it is time. The election's over. It's time to move on. We we all have gone through the example about Nixon and Watergate, but it also means sometimes these presidential elections, at the end of these bitterly contested fights, still even the party said, OK, it's time to turn the page. Even in 2016, by that next morning, the Democrats were doing so. But are you seeing anything here that would suggest that there are other Republicans, real ones that matter, not just the occasional lonely voice? They're going to push the party and Donald Trump to move past this and the next election? Yeah, it's still so hard to accept that. I mean, I thought after January 6th, when you saw McCarthy speak, that that was going to be the beginning of the leadership turning against him. And then somehow, somehow it's not happened. And it can't just be a few of them. And we got to figure out when is that going to happen? When is it going to break? And maybe Never. the more this thing becomes Never. clear what was done, you've got to believe that rational thought will come back in the minds of some of these people. But if not, then it's going to take the overwhelming organization, just as you were talking about earlier, yeah. organizing the country at all the levels so that he cannot win that election. If the party will, will not depart from him, then the, he has to be defeated and the, depart, the party has to be defeated. Amazing. So they're just, this is all they care about, right? It's not even about the prosecution, uh, being above the law, ensuring justice. It's just, hey, if the Republican Party doesn't abandon this guy, we just keep indicting him. He just keeps getting stronger. So we might actually have to organize. And they're excited to put this on the major news so they can just keep hammering Trump over and over and over again. Impeachment one, impeachment two, indictment one through four. Here we go. We'll see where it goes as we continue to cover my friends. And thank you for liking this video and subscribing wherever it is you are watching this one.